Welcome back, RDTV family. Thank you so much for tuning into my videos. Thank you so much for being support, a loyal supporter. Thank you so much for all the love that you guys continue to show me. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate you guys so, so, so very much. I love you guys, and I'm just super thankful and super grateful for all my supporters. So today, I'm doing part two of my little series of like how to survive your childhood you know a lot of us when we think about our childhood some of us can think of as really good childhood um we really we had a really good childhood or some of us can think of it as like we really didn't have some such a really good childhood it was it was really not at all if we compare it to our friends the best so I want to tell you guys about how to, because I said part one is get help. And then part two is about once you receive that help, use that help to guide you. You think that help to guide you to uh, create a better life for yourself. Because now it comes down to forgive. That is like the biggest thing, which is the hardest thing to do. Because a lot of us, when we go through trauma or anything that can, that's a bad experience that affects us when we, as we get into adulthood, we tend to, we tend to carry that with us into adulthood. So I really want you guys to do, start with forgiveness. That's second. Once you get help, work on forgiveness. Because that is power of, when you forgive somebody, that's not for the other person. That's for you. That is a personal thing for you. Because you want to be able to move on with your life and have a normal life. It, no, it would never be normal, normal as what the world wants you to think. But it can be a life that can change the direction of how it would have went if you just forgive. Now, if you don't forgive, I'm telling you the direction is going to go a totally different way. The direction of your life is going to cause a lot more trauma to yourself than what you went through in your experience of growing up. Because you want to, you're going to think about that so much so that it, it results into alcohol. That's how people start to drink, start to smoke a lot, start to abuse their bodies. So I don't want you to fall into that type of category because you try to erase or to forget something that happened to you or what you experienced growing up. I want you to use this as an opportunity to forget and move on with your life so that you have a better life and a better productive life. And you get your story is a testimony to somebody who who is going through that situation and they don't think that there's a way out or anybody can relate to them. I want you to be able to tell your story to somebody else, to help somebody else, to guide somebody else in the right direction because you went through it and you understand that if I didn't go through this, I couldn't be able to help somebody else. So you have to do, that comes with forgiving. That comes with forgiving whoever you have to forgive, uh, whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, whether it's the lack of not being there or being there and verbally abusive, physically abusive, or sexually abusive, like whatever the situation may be. I want you to learn how to forgive. I had to work on that personally myself. Mine was both parents. Um, my, mom, my mom was there. I can't say she wasn't there, but she wasn't the best mother. And, um... I would never bash my mother because she did what she knew. She that's that's what she knew. Um, you know, I said it in my previous video, part one. She did what she knew. Um, but I felt like she could have done better. So I had to reap the repercussions of that. And my father, he just didn't. He just wasn't there. So he was there. I found out he was there for all his other kids. I. I found out a few of my sisters, um, on my sister and brother, but mostly my sister. I just say one sister, I should say, on my daddy's side. And I found that he was, he's, he's there a part of their life. They know who he is and, and all that stuff. But some reason when it came to me, it just, 
he just didn't want to do it. Like, he a pop up every blue moon, and in his mind, he thought that, well, if I get real money, then that's good enough. No, I don't want your money. I want your time. I want you to get to know you because I don't know you. And I want you to get to know me because I'm your daughter. I want to find out, you know, I want you to find out what's my dislikes and et cetera, et cetera. I want you to get to know me as your daughter. Like, I want to be able to call you dad. I want to be able to call you father. Like, I didn't, I, I never, as I went on, I just never looked at him as a father because I just feel like he just somebody that just decided to do something with my mom and did have me. Boom. So, but that took a lot of maturing after a while and I had to learn how to forgive both parents both my mother and my father because growing up into adulthood it did affect me that's why I said it can affect you it just didn't affect me where I turned to drugs or alcohol or anything I just went through the part of rebellion as far as like I wasn't being an adult I was because some people it, it, it affect them differently when you have to grow up and you have to be an adult when you're young, by the time you hit adulthood, now you have a mind of a child because you you have to grow up so quick. So now you're trying to live out your childhood through your adult's years. And that's was my that's how it affected me and it was a lot of suicide of thought, depression and trying to commit suicide and that's, I'm gonna be let me say this if you ever if you watch my videos just know that I'm a very honest person I don't sugarcoat nothing I don't hide nothing because I want you to see me as an open book I'm an open book type person like you're gonna know you're gonna know my story like my story um I'm going to tell my story because I really do believe that I, I know for a fact that I'm not the only one who went through some things and I know that my my story is a testimony for somebody else to help them to get through it because a lot of people feel like that they're just in there like there's no possible way that they can get out of the situation but I want to be that testimony and say yes you can yes you will and I'm a living proof a living fact that you can and that you will so like I said but back to what I was saying my Mine was when I got to adulthood, I suffered from depression, suffered from suicidal thoughts, tried to commit suicide, and then I, I didn't have that mature adult mentality as I should have uh, once I hit adult. So, hit adulthood. So, it took a long time. It look, uh, took a lot of therapy. I'm not going to lie. I did therapy. Um, it took a lot of this reflected on myself and it really most importantly took God I, I really had to ask God to really help me to first narrow down to what was the problem like why am I like this like why am I going through what I'm going through why do I feel the way that I feel and when he revealed to me really what it was then that's when um I was like okay well Lord help me to get through it like help me to forgive and let go like now I knew what it, I knew already what it was, and I in the past I said, "Oh, help me to forgive, Lord," but I wasn't really ready to do that. But at this point, I got fed up with it because enough became enough. I don't want to go through depression, like feeling depressed and feeling sad and depressed all the time, and just every day, this you know I don't know what emotion I'm gonna feel, but most of it just being sad and depressed. So I'm like you know what, Lord, I need help to relieve it. I need help to let it go. So he gave me that strength. I always talk about that. Like he gave me that strength, and that's when I really had that weight lifted off my shoulder when I received that. Like me really letting it go and forgive. And um, it is, uh, it is like the hugest thing to do. It, it really is the hugest thing to do because it's like the strongest thing and the um, the best thing to do is to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. And you will find out in part three what's next. But that is part one is get help. Please, 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 please get help. Part two is to forgive. Whatever you have to figure out within yourself what's going on that you cannot live 
a normal lifestyle that you result into alcohol, well, you result into drinking or whatever, drinking, smoking, whatever the case may be, what is it that makes you think that that's the only way that I can escape my trauma? Once you figure that out, forget. Please, just forget. Because you have to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to move on with your life. And it's, the forgiveness is not for the other person. I want to say that again. The forgiveness is not for the other person. The forgiveness is for you. So you can have a healthier life. Because, you know, all that stress and all that worry and all that depression, all that stuff that you're experiencing, that and smoking and drinking on top of that, that really get messes with your health. You can have health issues later down the line. So please, get help and forget. Forget, forget, forget. But I love you guys and be prepared for what I have for part three. And just know that you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, I'm with you. I've been there. I've been in situations. So you're not alone. And um. I will continue to encourage you. I will continue to help you get through the best way that I can. I might not know. I might not never know who you are, but I will continue to help you. I will continue to um, help you get through your situation and just express to you that you're not alone, and express to you different situation, uh, different um, ways that help me get through. And most importantly, it's God. God was the biggest thing that helped me get through. So, I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys so, so very much. I know I said it at the beginning of my video, but I always say it at the end, too, because I really do appreciate you guys, and I really do love you guys, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to all my subscribers, thank you to all my supporters, and thank you for joining the family, joining the RDTV family. Um, please continue to support me. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe, please. Please, please, please. That being said, I love you guys. Live, laugh. Always remember to live, laugh, love, and smile. Because you're awesome. Peace.